When I talk about this, this is not glorifying the life. It's just making statements about people who made brilliant statements, whether they were mobsters or not. They're just cool statements, they're smart statements, they're things that you can learn from. I learned a lot on the street, people. My perception about things comes from my street life in many, many ways, and of course the life that I've spent afterwards since then. And we have a different outlook. I have a different outlook on the government than you have, a different outlook on law enforcement than you have, a different outlook on certain things because of where I came from, because of what I experienced for 20 years. And a lot of guys in that life were pretty smart. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. Everything is great on this end. And as always, we give God all the praise, honor, and glory for that. Don't forget November 19th at Resorts International Hotel in Atlantic City in the Superstar Showroom. I'm going to be there. And it's going to be a great night. For those of you that get VIP tickets, it's going to be great. We're going to spend time together. You'll get a book. We'll sign some books. Get your tickets. I think the uh, website is here someplace. You can get them today. So what am I doing today? A lot of people think, you know, for some reason that gangsters, ah, they're not too smart. You know, them, these, and those type of guys. Obviously, we get the bad rap. We're murderers. We're c criminals. All true at some point in time. I'm not doing that. I'm not glorifying the life. I'm merely telling these things. People, listen, you all tell me you want to hear mob stories. Do I want to tell them all the time? Not really. I have, you know, I have a broader appeal, I think, in many, many ways. I have other things. I like to tell things through my perception as a one-time mob guy and what I'm doing now. People tell me, Michael, don't get too political. Hey, you know what? It's not about politics, man. It's about what's going on in our world today that's so important. There's so many significant issues. I think I have a platform to talk about it. We'll do that at some point in time, too. But I know you want to hear the mob stuff. So this was interesting. I was looking up some quotes from former mob guys, you know, most of them are dead at this point in time, but very, very interesting, some of them very insightful. And like I said, I met a lot of very smart guys. I really did. Joe Colombo, smart guy. Carmine Persico, my dad. You know, a lot of guys, and I can name a bunch, smart guys. Unfortunately, they were, made bad choices in their life, suffered the consequences, just about all of them. But they weren't stupid. They weren't dumb. Listen, you don't control a multi-million dollar organization like the Mafia or a Mafia family, Cosa Nostra family, without having some brains and some, you know, smarts. A lot of it's street smarts, but some of it, you know, <laughs> you'll be surprised. But the most quoted guy, interestingly enough, Al Capone. Yeah, they have a lot of quotes from him, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about some. I have about 30. I'm not going to do them all, because I know your attention span on YouTube is not great, so we can't do long videos. We do them short, but we try to have an impact when we do them. So let me start to read them off, and uh, tell me what you think. I'll give you my perception of them. First one, be careful who you call your friends, I'd rather have four quarters than a hundred pennies. Popularity is overrated. That was Al Capone. Now think about that. Be careful who you call your friends. You had a way of describing it. I'd rather have four quarters, a lot of money, less people involved or less change that you got to carry around than a hundred pennies. People, very rarely do we have that many friends in our life. I think we know that. We have a few that we can really count on. You don't look to make friends everywhere. Me, I'm a network type of guy. I make relationships. I can't call everybody my friend because we're not that tight. We're not that close. We don't do things together. Our families aren't, you know, joined together. But, you know, we're relationships. We're associations. But very few friends do you have in life. And Capone knew that. And that was a brilliant statement, I think, by him. I'd rather have four quarters, meaning, you know, quality friends, than a hundred friends, the people that say they're, they're friends. So that was Al Capone. And you know what? Popularity is overrated. Trust me when I tell you that. Okay, let's move on. This is John Gotti. I never lie because I don't fear anyone. You only lie when you're afraid. Well, you know, I think that was more bravado from John than anything else. You know, listen, I'm going to be honest. My father taught me, you know what? He said, Mike, I never want to lie to hurt anyone, but I'll lie to help people. And you know what? I kind of understand that. I mean, you know, if a family member, if you had a lie to help your family member, would you do it? You know, sometimes you don't want to expose somebody. Would you lie to cover up for somebody? 
Even if they did the wrong thing, I would. You know, I'm being honest with you. Wrong or right, I would. And yes, I'm a Christian, and my Christians will, you know, they're, they're, they'll knock me for it. But that's okay. This is my feeling. It's my deal with God. I have to deal with him at some point. But I think that was more bravado from John. You know, I'm sure John lied plenty in his life when he had to, especially to protect himself and those people close to him. But that was John. Next one I thought was really brilliant. I don't want to be a product of my environment. I want my environment to be a product of me. Frank Costello. Now, Costello was brilliant, the prime minister, boss at one time of the Genovese family. But just think of that. I mean, what a, what a brilliant statement. I don't want to be a product of my environment. I want my environment to be a product of me. In other words, I don't want my environment to change me or to rule me or to make me who I am. I want to make the people around me. I want to create my environment. I want to make those people strong or, or you know, I want to do that. I, I don't want to be led by uh, the people that I'm around, the environment that I'm in. I want to be the impactful guy, the leader guy. And I, I thought that was a brilliant statement by Frank Costello and he was a brilliant guy. I had a, a, a lot of respect for him. He was one of the guys in past videos that I said I think was one of the premier guys in that life, one of the smartest guys. Let's move on. All right, well, this we know. Somebody messes with me, I'm going to mess with him. That's Al Capone. I don't think there's any uh, you know, deep uh, message in that. Just uh, don't mess with Capone. Another one by Al Capone. You can get much further with a kind word and a gun than you can with just a kind word. Now, take, uh, take gun out of that and put the word leverage in there. You can get much farther with a kind word and leverage than you can with just a kind word. You know, when I was um, negotiating my plea agreement, after I had beat the Giuliani case, I was negotiating this whole gas tax racketeering case, I had leverage with the government. I was nice to them, you know, we went in, we talked, we sat down, I knew we had to make a deal, but I had leverage because I had beat them on a big case. And the major witness against me in the Giuliani case uh, was also going to testify against me in the, uh, this other racketeering case, the gas scam thing. So I had leverage. So it's good whenever you go into a meeting to have something that you can use as leverage. You know, try to find it. There's always something there. And if you don't have leverage, you might be kind, but may not end up the way you want to. So again, Capone says a gun. What he really meant is leverage. Whenever you go into a negotiation, try to have leverage. Whenever you're sitting down with people and you want something out of that sit down, try to have some leverage. Be nice about it first. You know, it's the best way to, you know, to uh, approach things, but have leverage. But a Capone, again, brilliant guy in many, many ways. I like this one. The loudest one in the room is the weakest one in the room, and that was Frank Lucas. And you know what? I've seen that my whole life. The guy that's blowing things up and talking, and he's got bravado, and he doesn't stop talking, doesn't let anybody talk. He's the weakest guy in the room. Why do you have to be that way? If you're sure of yourself and you know what you got going in, you keep quiet. I always say this, you know, be a good listener. Let other people talk and bloviate, as the word is, and do all the talking. You sit down, absorb it, and when you have to talk, you say something meaningful, and you put that person in their place. The loudest person in the room, my experience, always the weakest one. So learn how to hold your tongue. It's so important, people. So important. That was Frank Lucas. This was an interesting one. When you love someone, you got to trust them. Of course. There's no other way. You've got to give them the key to everything that's yours. Otherwise, what's the point? And for a while, I believe that that's the kind of love I had. And that was from Arnold Ace Rothstein. We know who he was. Remember Casino? But uh, very, very interesting. He said, you gotta, if you love someone, you got to trust them with everything. I don't know if I necessarily believe in that. I, mean, I love my wife. There's certain things I'm not going to tell her because I don't want to put her in trouble, you know, when I was doing something that wasn't right. I don't know. I mean, think about it. When you love someone, do you have to trust them and tell them everything? I don't know about that. But it was, you know, I guess that was his relationship with that person at the time. But it seems like he got burnt. And, uh, and that didn't work. And if you look at the movie Casino, well, you know the story there with, you know, his wife, you know, what happened after that. Didn't work out well. Anyway, it was an interesting statement from him. I like this one. There's no such thing as good money or bad money. There's just money. 
Lucky Luciano, how right is that? You know, the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. A lot of people, uh, you know, they misinterpret that. They always say money is the root of all evil. No, it's not. The love of money is the root of all evil. Money in itself is not bad. Money is an instrument for comfort. It's an instrument for success. It's an instrument to help people. It's not bad money. Now, obviously, if you get the money illegally, well, the money isn't illegal. It's the act that gave you that money that's illegal. Money is money. It doesn't change its spots. You know, they talk about blood money. Well, okay, the act that gave you that money is no good. But it's not the money itself. I know that's so hard for some people to understand, but it's not. It's how you obtain that money that really matters. So that was, uh, that was a good statement by uh, Lucky Luciano. This is typical of this guy. If you think your boss was stupid, remember you wouldn't have a job if he was any smarter. Who other than John Gotti would said that? I don't know about that, but you know, you can call your boss stupid. Sometimes your boss is not brilliant. You might be smarter than them. They just happen to be your boss. So I don't know if I agree. That's two for two with John that I'm not too sure of. But anyway, interesting because it's John. I like this one. We all know this. No one will ever kill me. They wouldn't dare. And that was Carmine Galante. He was the one time uh, acting boss of the Bonanno family. Famously got killed in 1979 in a restaurant, cigar in his mouth. We saw the photos. Those of you that are into the mob stuff, you know all about that. But very ironic. This one, good fellas don't sue good fellas. Good fellas kill good fellas. And that's Salvatore Profaci. He was a captain along with, uh, with me and the Colombo family, knew him well. But that's the truth. I think it was picked up on a wiretap saying that good fellas don't sue good fellas, good fellas kill good fellas. And that's true. We weren't allowed to sue one another. We had to resolve our differences in a different way, and hopefully it didn't end up, like he said, killing somebody. But Sal Profaci, again, he was a couple with the Colombo family with me. Capitalism is the legitimate racket of the ruling class. Who other than Al Capone? Capitalism is the legitimate racket of the ruling class. Okay, well, we're a capitalist nation. America is. I believe in that. But capitalism creates the ruling class because those that are capable make money, and that's how it goes. So is it a racket when there's different twists, when government gets involved and lobbying and all sorts of things happen and yes, things get done under the table. Yes, it's a whole big thing, but it's not meant to be that way. Capitalism is meant to be a great ideology. Hey, we all have an opportunity to earn money here in America, but I see what Capone did and I understand it. Capitalism is the legitimate racket of the ruling class. In many ways, that's a very true statement. Not gonna get into all of it, but those of you, uh, you know, that pick up on what I'm saying, you get it. Let's move on. If a man is dumb, someone is going to get the best of him, so why not you? If you don't, you're as dumb as he is. Well, you know, that's kind of the uh, Machiavellian ideology we had on the street. If somebody is dumb or silly or doesn't know what he's doing, you may as well take advantage of him because if you don't, somebody else will. And if you don't and you let somebody else, well, then you're dumber than him. And that was kind of the philosophy ideology on the street, you know. You had to be the first one there, and you were the one to make the move. Again, that's a mob thing. That's not necessarily, you know, the right way to go in the legitimate, decent, moral world. But Arnold Rothstein is very interesting. Judges, lawyers, politicians have a license to steal. We don't need one. Carlo Gambino. Well, again, ideology of the street. We didn't need a license. Look, we were criminals. We weren't worried about breaking the law in many, many ways. And that was kind of the thought process on the street. They needed a license. We didn't. We just did our thing. And uh, Carlo Gambino. And that was true. This one would be interesting for some of you. We took care of Kennedy. Sam Giancana. Not going to go into all of that again. I told you I heard this my entire life. And I believe it. There's no question in my mind. JFK hit was a mob assassinated plot. That's how it went down. So I'm not going to get into that. We've done videos on that. It takes many stepping stones for a man to rise. None can do it unaided. Joe Bonanno. I agree with that. You know, whoever's a success had help in some way, shape, or form. Now, that doesn't mean you don't take anything away from them because if they were able to engineer it, if they knew what they were doing, if they put the right people at, around them, if they had the right timing, they had the right brain, yes, but you always need help some way, somehow. Nobody does anything alone. I know Obama once made a statement. If you're a successful, you didn't do that. Somebody else helped you. Well, he kind of said it in a negative way. 
He was kind of taking that success away from somebody. I'm not doing that. I'm saying successful people, you know, they're all determined. They all have a quality, you know, that makes them successful. But they always had help, some way, shape, or form. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But that doesn't take anything away from their success. Remember that. And that was um, from Joe Bonanno. Smart saying. This one you all know. You've heard it before. Nothing personal. It's just business. And that was actually said by Otto Berman. He was Dutch Schultz's accountant. And he was actually killed later on by Lucky Luciano. And you know, that's something on the street. Hey, it wasn't personal, it was just business. Sammy has said it, I've said it in many ways, you know. Things that we had to do, uh, we didn't always take it personal. It was part of the business that we all agreed to. Was it right? Not always. And I want to make that clear, it wasn't right. But that's how we looked at things. Hey, this is the business of the life. This is the oath that we took. We all understand it. We all knew what the consequences were for our actions if we were to do something wrong. So it's, it's business, not personal. But in many times it was personal. Okay, I like this one. Las Vegas turns women into men and men into idiots. Bugsy Siegel. I've seen that happen a thousand times. Vegas, the gambling, the women, you know, the booze, the high life, the night, the fast life. You're in the fast track. Las Vegas turns women into men and men into idiots. Uh, I don't know how the women get into men, but I understand maybe because they're in control in Vegas, they kind of got it down. It's the men that are doing all the silly stuff and the women end up on top. I've seen many times when guys were gambling women around, hey, you're my lucky charm, and they were giving women money, and who knows, I think women you know, probably have the edge in Vegas because guys do do stupid things. I've seen that a thousand times. Bugsy Siegel, he should know, right? Okay, I like this one a lot. Don't mistake my kindness for weakness. I'm kind to everyone, but when someone is unkind to me, weakness is not what you're going to remember about me. Al Capone. I like that. You know, a lot of people do mistake kindness for weakness. And then, unfortunately, they take advantage of that and they have to see the other side of you. But Capone said, you mistake my kindness for weakness, and I know that weakness is not what you're going to remember about me. Al Capone, he was the most quoted guy in all of these, uh, of all of these mob guys that I'm talking about. That was a great statement. I like that, Al. You have to be like a lion and a fox. The fox is smart enough to recognize traps, and the lion is strong enough to scare away the wolves. Be like a lion and a fox, and no one will ever beat you, Carlo Gambino. I like that. Lion and a fox. If you're as shrewd as a fox and as strong as a lion, hey, in that life, quite often you'll survive. And that's, that's important. That was Carlo Gambino, one of the longest living mob guys. What happened? In 50 years in that life, I think he did 22 months in prison. He was on top of his family for 20 years, and he died in his own bed at the age of 76, I think, in 1976. He did that life right. Moving on. We're all going to die. Let's act accordingly. Okay. That was Frank Costello. True statement, people. As a Christian, we're all going to die. Let's act accordingly. For me, coming to Christ. Yeah, people are going to say, that's the way, people. Jesus Christ, way, the truth, and the life. You come to Christ, you're doing it according uh, to the right plan because we are all going to die. That is without question. Don't lie. Tell one lie, then you got to tell another lie to compound on the first. Meyer Lansky, brilliant, very, very smart guy. You know, he had a lot to do uh, along with Luciano in, in forming the commission and really bringing Cosa Nostra to where it is today. Lansky, he was a brilliant guy. And uh, I did my last video on Atlantic City, and now he was one of the guys that designed the commission, and they had the Atlantic City Conference back then. Lansky played a big role in what Cosa Nostra is, good or bad, you got to give him credit for that. All pro sports, as well as the NCAA, should thank God every day we have sports betting here. We have the only agency that regulates the honesty of the games. Maya Lansky again. You know, he was saying, he's telling the NCAA and all pro sports, we're the guys that keep it honest. Without us, hey, this would be a mess. And you know what? To a great degree, he was right. We kept it honest. We kept the games honest. Unless we were fixing them, didn't happen that much, but it happened, okay? Meyer Lansky. Always overpay your taxes. That way you'll get a refund. Again, Meyer Lansky, thinking ahead of the government. Don't let them come after you. Overpay them. They'll give you the money back, and you'll keep them off your back. How many people do that? Not many. In New York, it's like a rat in a maze. Everyone living on top of each other. But out here, I can breathe. I love Los Angeles, Mickey Cohen. True. In New York, everybody was stepping on top of everybody. Mickey Cohen comes out to L.A. He's got it all by himself, practically. 
And uh, you know the story of Mickey, not going to go into that now, but that was a pretty fair statement. It was, it was, you know, open ground out here, free territory. Anybody could do whatever the heck they want, you know, out in L.A. So Mickey Cohen took advantage of that. And this is the last one. Now, look, I've been quoted many times. I'm not using my own quotes. You hear enough of me. But this is the last one. I saved it for last. Don't let your tongue be your worst enemy. And that was none other than my dad, Sonny Francis, told me that all the time. Mike, watch your tongue. Be slow to speak, quick to listen. Don't look, don't talk on the phone. He said, the phone is a cop. That's what he used to tell me. The phone is a cop. When we were in our house and he wanted to talk, he was afraid that the house was bugged. We used to go into the bathroom, put our heads in the sink, turn on the faucets, flush the toilet, and that's how he would talk to me. Or we'd go out in the backyard. Did you ever see a picture talking to the catcher, how they put the glove over the hand? That's how we used to talk. Unfortunately, it wasn't until later on that my dad got caught on... Uh, you know, wiretaps, surveillance tapes, and uh, he didn't say some good things, but he was old at that point, didn't realize it, but throughout most of his life, uh, he kept to that. He was very careful not to get caught, you know, on any kind of surveillance or wiretaps, but hey, God rest his soul. You know the story of my dad. He left us in uh, two years ago at the age of uh, 103. So that's it for today. Again, when I talk about this, this is not glorifying the life. It's just making statements about people who made brilliant statements, whether they were mobsters or not. You know, they're just cool statements. They're smart statements. They're things that you can learn from. You know, I learned a lot on the street, people. My perception about things comes from my street life in many, many ways. And of course, the life that I've spent afterwards since then. But, you know, you perceive things from the environment that you were in at one time. And we have a different outlook. I have a different outlook on the government than you have, a different outlook on law enforcement than you have, a different outlook on certain things because of where I came from, because of what I experienced for 20 years. And a lot of guys in that life were pretty smart. And so these were just a couple of the quotes. Hope you enjoyed it. You know, we'll keep moving on. I got some good stuff coming up. You know, one of the things I was doing, I was looking at a list, and the list uh, was of uh, nefarious father and son combinations in that life. We'll get to that. That's coming up next. But anyway, that's it for today. How do I always leave you? Same way. Be safe, people. I don't even want to turn the news on anymore. What's going on in this country? It's crazy. Be safe. Be healthy. Man, if you, you know what? Be safe and be healthy. That's like two of a kind. You got to do them both. And as always, I mean this sincerely from the heart. May God bless every one of you. And yes, I will see you next time. Take care.